Good morning, welcome to worship. This morning we are blessed to have Clint Salyer with us. Bring our call to worship, a beautiful traditional hymn called How Great Thou Art. Good morning. Good morning, Dwayne. It's good to see you. <laughs> I chastised him last week at the meeting. I said, I haven't seen you in work, church for a few weeks. And he said, but I have to work six days a week. I said, well, yeah. <laughs> but it's good to see you. Uh, do we have any first-time visitors today? I mean, if you'd be bold enough to raise your hand, we have a brochure that tells you who we are and what we do here at King of Kings. 
Our next Friday dance is on July 1st, which is this Friday. Food at 5 and music at 6. Um, I've been asked to remind people that our, we don't pass our offering plates, and we haven't since that was part of COVID. But they are there right as you come in. So if you forget to put your offering in when you come in, you can do it during communion or because there'll be an empty plate there, or you could sneak back during the service at some side and put it in there. But just a reminder that your offerings is what supports the mission and ministry here at King of Kings. Uh, music Jam, Saturdays at one. Our COVID numbers, I wasn't a week for, for the announcement. They, hopefully they're starting to drop again, but they were getting high. They were up over 200. Uh, for that's a day in the Pasco County. That's what I've been using for a, a benchmark. Our next mobile food pantry is July 14th. So not, um, it's like two, two and a half weeks from now, but July 14th at 3 p.m. Oh, Saturday, I on Saturday, July 9th, Kyle Hall is in use, so the jam will move to Sunday, July 10th. Okay, so when we talked about moving the jam, there were some things that Kyle Hall still gets used for, and it was already on the schedule. So the, next, the music jam on July, uh, that would have been July 9th, will be July 10th. I'm hoping that's not confusing. The other thing, starting on July 22nd at 6 p.m., we're gonna start doing karaoke once a month. That's Friday, is a, uh, Friday July 2nd um, at 6 p.m. is actually the, we go to the dance the first and the third, so this is the fourth Friday, is that how that's working? Yes. And if you're interested, is that, I'm right on that, right? The 22nd. Huh? The 22nd. The 22nd is the fourth Friday. Okay. <laughs> yes, is it first, eighth, 22nd. So it'll be the fourth Friday. Yes. <laughs> Our calendars aren't metric. <laughs> but it's the fourth Friday. We're going to start doing that at 6 p.m. If you're interested in helping out or attending or anything else, can you bring friends? Yes, you can bring friends. See Rose, though. Rose or Clint. Yes. Raise your hand, Rose and Clint. Well, we know Clint. Clint just sang our song for us. New members class today after service and next week after service two classes but you can also come in by transfer if you've been a member of another lutheran church uh that's all my announcements are there any other announcements for the good of our family yes chris you're going to get up and give your little talk oh well come on up here and give your little talk okay make your announcement then you got a mic Hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's on. Uh, for anybody's information, because it's the 4th of July weekend, next weekend, at the jam on the 2nd, we're going to have a potluck at 12 o'clock. Everybody's welcome. And uh, if you bring something, that's fine. If you don't, there will be plenty of food. 12 o'clock for a potluck, and then we'll have a jam at 1 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Pull the mic down so we can hear you. Good morning. I just want to share some information about. Can I hear you. That's it. Right into it. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm here to share the information that I can with you about. You blessed us, my husband and I, on the first weekend in June, the third, the fourth, and the fifth to go to the Bahamas Synod Assembly in Orlando. And. It is a blessing and it was a blessing because I had this vision of the synod completely different from what I experienced. It is committee people, it's many, many people that have many jobs that make that entire thing work and you've got to see them in action. They're well organized. It begins with prayer. It begins with the Eucharist service. They had speakers. There was one that touched home for me, and he spoke on how people and their diversity, how, how many of you have sat at a red light and there's a man with a sign that said, need help, 
need money, need whatever. I know myself, that person, I'm uncomfortable. And all we really need to do for doing God's work is just, you don't have to give them money, just acknowledge that you see them. Because they have a story and many of us don't bother to try to find that out. If it's not someone on the side of the road, it could be somebody in front of a store. But those are the things that we just, we're uncomfortable with and we shy away from. But they're humans just like us and they need love. That's one person that touched there's also a uh, church for the deaf that they're putting together and they're hoping to open in September, which I think was just absolutely wonderful. The food, all of you brought here. We had five boxes that we took in our car and Pastor brought some with him. It was a huge success. The whole entire wall was lined with the food that we brought. So thank you, all of you. There were classes that you could take on Saturday it was three. In, in the afternoon, you could choose three. One that stuck out for me was what we are actually doing as a council and members is the transition that we're trying to make to find, whether it be part-time, interim, whatever, what, whatever our finances will be to get that kind of permanent person here. And, and we are in that process now, so that was very helpful. There was a room right next to ours, and you could hear singing, and it felt like they were tapping on the wall. It was a group of Pentecostal women from Venezuela were having their assembly like ours. What they were doing is they were praying for us in our room. And at night, one of our members or one of our pastors went over to see what their assembly was about. And from what he told us on Sunday morning, he cried, they were crying, and they also asked if they could come over and greet us on Sunday morning. And one of their leader and an interpreter came over. And it was, I don't think there was a dry, I in the house. It was so touching. She prayed for us, <clears throat> and we literally, as they finished and were going back out, someone started the song, Hallelujah. Remember, George? Mm -hmm. And it just flowed. Everyone was singing with such prayer in their hearts, and that's what you felt. The entire assembly, it was just, they were joyful to be there. They hadn't been together just like us. They were doing Zooms and they have big meetings and it was a wonderful, wonderful time for everyone. So I would encourage anyone that gets the opportunity and Bishop Suarez, what a different opinion do you get when you physically are around that man? He's so joyful. He's human, <laughs> he's just like us. But he was so thrilled. It was a huge gathering. It was set up so professionally is the word I could use. And you know, George, because you did, George here did the election part of it. I don't know how, God bless you. Whew, that was amazing. So I left there knowing that what we try to do here, we need to continue, but take it to that next level. And when you see someone, you give them that smile. But also, we have to know what we feel in our hearts about the Lord and our gathering and our worship and what God is about, we need to take forward and share with anyone that we see. And I thank you again for the opportunity to go and to be in that assembly. And thank you. Thank you. You don't know how fortunate you are here in the Florida Bahamas Synod because you really do have a very good, active, involved synod. There's so much ministry that until you attend something like this, you don't realize how much is going on in this area, in this state. So yeah, it is a blessing to see that working that way. So with that, are there any other announcements? Because how about we do some worship, folks?
Okay, I invite those who are able to stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but we have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we too often pass by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and frame us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, ruler of all hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful in the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Kings. And then the Lord said to Elijah, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshu, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, of Abel Menhola, as prophet in your place. So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, who was plowing. There was 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12th. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran over and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elijah said to him, go back again for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, look, took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elijah and became his servant. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read responsibly Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge to you. I, I have said to the Lord, Lord in the arm of our God, my God, above all others. All my light is in the godly that are in the Lamb. Upon those who are double among the people. By those who run after other gods. Shall have their troubles multiply. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I set the Lord always above before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave. For I can only see the dead. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from the book of Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to, the, to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now, the works of the flesh are the obvious fornication, impurity, 
licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, en envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Come on, you're going to help me with this. Is it, you got the important part here. Okay, got some questions for you. You got to get over. We got to be on camera. Besides, you're going to upstage me on this. Okay, Jesus says. Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. So, what kind of creature lives in a barn? What kind of, what kind of animal lives in a barn? A horse. What else? Pig. Yeah, a pig might live in a barn. They have a special name for a pig place, too. What is that called? A sty. Didn't your parents ever say, your room looks like a pig sty? Or was that me when I was growing up? How about what kind of animal lives in a belfry? What's a belfry? It's like a little tower up on top of a, a building, kind of like a mini steeple. Bats. You ever hear the expression, you got bats in your belfry? How about if you go in, a, in the water and you turn over a rock, what might you find under there? Haven't you ever gone crawfish hunting? That's where you find crawfish. You go in fresh waters and you find rocks and you turn them over and that's where the crawfish are. That's what I used to do. How about if you just go out in the field and turn a rock over? What might you find? What lives under a rock? Ants, snakes, lizards, all sorts of things live under. How about in a hollow log? What might live in there? You don't know? Maybe a raccoon 
or a possum, okay? How about there's whole groundhogs living holes in the ground? See, all, all God's creatures often have homes. But Jesus says, I don't have a home, but I think Jesus does have a place to live. Where do you think Jesus' home is? Now, want to help me out there? Where's Jesus' home? Heaven. Where's Heaven. that? Heaven. He- well, in, 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 in okay, your in your heart. See, a lot of people are going to say church, that's God's house, so Jesus must live in God's house. So I think that's wrong. They said it over there, in your heart. This is where Jesus lives. And you know how you invite Jesus to live in your heart? It's when you're nice. It's when you're loving. It's when you share. It's when you forgive. When you do all those things, you're inviting Jesus to live in your heart because that's where Jesus needs to live. That's the most important place is that you make room for Jesus in your heart. Okay? Okay. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we invite you to come live in our heart. Help us to be loving and caring and sharing and forgiving and all the things that you've taught us to be. Help us to be like you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for helping. We got, we got the, the box here. So, help yourself. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Same stuff, isn't it? We're going to have to talk to somebody about getting some new stuff in there. You got it? You got that? Take the little tiger. All right, thank you. Where do tigers live? Anywhere they want. (laughs) I read this thing about Jesus in a home, and I remember feeling guilty reading this because I always had a home. I mean, I've been fortunate in my life. I've always had a home to live in. In fact, I had a tendency to make my homes nice because that's what I did. I worked in that end of construction where we did the interiors of things and made them nice. So I end up living in a nice house and then I'm wondering, should I feel guilty about this? But I don't want to go right there about the home and inviting Jesus to live with us in our heart. I want to start out at the beginning of this reading. Okay, in the very beginning of this reading, they say Jesus has set his face towards Jerusalem. He is now heading onward to Jerusalem. And they send out people ahead of him to try to make a place to get ready as they get these towns. And there was this one town, a Samaritan town. If you know your biblical history, you know the Samaritans and the Jews were kind of antagonistic to one each other. They called each other names. Um, Didn't want to receive Jesus. And Peter and John said, should we call, was it Peter and James? It was two of the disciples said, should we call fire out of the sky and smite them? Okay, should we call fire down upon them? They don't believe the way we believe. They don't worship the way we worship. They don't act the way we think they should act. So let's call fire out of the sky and smite them. I think that's part of our human tendency, especially within the church. We get to the point where we say we believe and we expect everyone to believe like us. And throughout history, we've been calling fire out of the sky to smite those that do not believe like we do. And we still do that today and maybe the fire doesn't come out of the sky but since we called it we found the big become the agent of it and that we have fought wars more wars in this world have been fought over religion than anything else because people do not believe the way we believe and I think that's part of the problem because we end up believing see believing is relatively easy okay believing does not take any real commitment. It's just like, you hear something, it sounds good to you, you believe it, okay? It's strictly a head thing, and then we wrap it up into emotions, and people who do not believe like us, well, then they're the others, and they're outside. Believing is easy, and there's many things in this world where people believe different things and then fight over. We live in a country right now that's becoming more and more divided because people are so hung up 
on their beliefs that they don't listen, they don't sympathize, they don't hear what the other is saying. So I'm going to step on a landmine because it happened. Friday, the decision came down. There were three decisions came down this week from the Supreme Court, and they were all bothersome for many people. But the Fridays was the worst or the most bothersome. I know some people are celebrating that, and fine, celebrate that. However, there's other people who are panicked about it, who are frightened about it. Because for 50 years or more, this has been a huge dividing line because of what people believe, okay? And when we start to force others to believe how we believe, when we insist on passing laws that are the equivalent of bringing fire down and smiting one another, and we haven't stopped and listened. And I've said to many people who want to get into this termination of pregnancy argument with me, and fighting against Roe, I said, did you read Roe v. Wade? Did you read it? Did you take time to look it up and read it? Because personally, I'm very uncomfortable with the idea of terminating a pregnancy. But after reading Roe many years ago, I realized why that decision was made the way it was. And I really wonder now what's going to go on because a lot of people are scared. And I don't think all the ramifications of Friday's decisions are going to come apparent for years to come. It's another very divisive thing because we are fighting over beliefs, things that take very little commitment, and we are content to draw fire down from the sky and smite those who don't believe the way we believe. It's happened throughout the Bible, it's happened throughout history, and it continues to happen today. The church is one of the worst places for this. If you know the history of the Reformation, there was bloodshed over separating from the Church of Rome throughout the middle part of Germany. Then there was more bloodshed about those who separated about the individual beliefs. Should we have adults baptized or should children be baptized? Do we do communion for everybody or do we separate people for doing communion? And these battles continue within the church. Do we ordain women or don't we ordain men? Do we ordain gays and lesbian or don't we ordain gays, gay and lesbian people? And these battles continue. And we take up arms and we divide and we pray for God to smite the other side. And if we can, and if we're powerful enough, and we're organized enough, we get the legislatures to do our job for us and create laws that do the smiting. Belief is easy, and it doesn't take much commitment to get into a belief. Jesus doesn't say quite often, believe in me. In this lesson especially, he doesn't talk about belief. In fact, he rebukes the two disciples who want to call fire down just because the Samaritans weren't ready to believe. He does say, follow me. Follow me. Following takes action. Following takes commitment. Following takes work. Many of us get real hung up in the beliefs. We will stand and say the creed together with the words, I believe, I believe, I believe. But when it comes to living that belief, we all fall short. Follow me, Jesus says. And you notice everybody has an excuse of why they can't follow right there and then. Well, I, 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 gotta, I gotta go home and bury my dad. He's only 50 years old. He's probably gonna live for another 30 years. But when he dies, I can come follow you. Or I, w I wanna go say goodbye to my family. And that's gonna take a while because I got a lot of family and they're spread all around. We're gonna have parties and we're gonna carry on. And I wanna get it all out of my system. But, but then I'll follow you. We say this about following. Belief is easy. Following is tough. What we kind of got right past on the children's sermon was this whole house of God thing. Okay? Because somebody blurted out, Carl, thank you very much, in your heart.
because that was the point, because I was hoping someone would say, this is God's house, this is where Jesus lives. And this whole God's house thing, I get it, but it's kind of like a belief thing. So we build this nice room, this nice house, and we come and worship God here. And then we kind of go out in the world and we forgot, we don't read the doors that are right over the, the doors as we go, the words that are right over the doors as we go out, entering the mission field. See, I think that we need to stop thinking about our churches, about our sanctuaries, about our buildings as God's house. And we need to start thinking about church like God's hotel or God's motel. Now, when you're traveling and you stop at a motel, what are you doing? You're getting refreshed. You're getting some rest. You might get something to eat. You sure hope they have a bath, right? You see where the parallels are? So we come here week after week because we need to refresh ourselves. We need to spend some time worshiping God and getting out of our own head, getting out of our own space, getting out of our own way, and remembering that God is first, okay? And we get a meal, and we get renewed, and then we're supposed to go out and follow Jesus, okay? Then we go out and we follow Jesus. This isn't God's house, this is God's motel. We're just pulling in for a period of time to get renewed and refreshed to get back on the road. Because following takes commitment. Following means that you're putting God first. Following means that when you, you take your resources of time and talent and tithe and wealth, you put God first. You don't give God leftovers. You put God first. That's following Jesus. You allow yourself to be called to uncomfortable places. You grow in your discipleship. And just like I told Kyla and Leah, you're putting God, Kayla, Kyla, do I get that wrong? Kyla, right? Kyla and Leah, right? Kai and Layla, okay. As I told them, you're putting God, you're giving Jesus a room in your heart. You're making Jesus and the teachings of Jesus and the love of Jesus in your heart. Did Jesus ever call fire down and smite anybody? Any, anything? He, he cursed the fig tree one time, but as far as I remember, he never called fire down on anybody. But yet, in the book of Revelation, when they talk about the church at Laosha, he talks about lukewarm faith. The people who say they believe, but they're not following. That's what lukewarm faith is. See, we've been given a gift. We've been given a gift of freedom from that thing that held us down, from our own brokenness. We've been given the gift of a new life through Christ that we can re refresh and renew ourselves in our baptism. We've been invited to come and check in to any one of God's hotels anytime we need to get off the road for a little bit and get refreshed and renewed. But the blessing of this is we also get to follow and we get to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God and we get to do it with our actions, and we get to do it with love, and sometimes we'll even do it with words. Amen. Amen.
made that song with George. I just thought it was the perfect song. It's amazing how the spirit works, isn't it? <laughs> you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe, we believe in, in him, him and, and marked by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Living in, together in trust us hope. Let us confess and also then live our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He was ascended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of your Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. invite you to be seated and we'll do our joys and thanksgiving and then we'll lift up those concerns those things that we would like God to intercede on so let's first start with the joys it's always good to start with the joys do we have joys that we want to share this week I'll share one I prayed a couple weeks ago about my oldest daughter was moving from at the Atlanta area to Rochester New York while I called her yesterday, um, she's all settled in, things are working, things seem to be pretty good and that's safe, so I thank God for getting her safe from Snellville to Rochester. Thank you. Are there other joys that we'd like to share where God has blessed us? Yes, Charlie. Today is mine and Marianne's 46th wedding anniversary. Oh! She said, she said she wants to go to the most expensive place in town, so I'm going to take it to the racetrack and fill up her gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Good morning. I am very joyful that I was able to safely travel to New York this past week, and I got to see my son and my daughter and all our grandchildren I haven't seen in three years. She came from Australia. They finally opened the gates and let them out. <laughs> and I safely got home to my hubby, uh, who held down the fort while I was away, even though he's hurting, but he's doing better, thank goodness. Thank the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> Any else? Okay, now we're, we'll come. Oh, we had Chris. You gotta jump when you do that. You, you. Give me a microphone. I am joyful that the past week I was able to 
have my grands great grandson come and spend time and he'll go back next week because he has to go back to work and his sister will come and visit so i didn't think i'd get to do that this summer but we are and we're wow blessed. thank you wonderful thank you chris uh how about s any other joys okay how about some concerns I'd like everyone to say a prayer for my sister in law who was placed in a facility last Thursday, and they tell us that she has maybe a week. Okay. So I'd like some peace for her family and her husband. Yes. Thank you. Elaine was sharing with me that her sister has had cancer and it's metastasized, and she's, been, she's gone into hospice and now they're just waiting. But she also says she's trusting in that promise. Okay. Of other concerns, yes. As you can see, my little ones are not here today. Their dad was in the hospital with COVID. Oh. And it was really difficult to explain to them why they couldn't come today. But I think I got through. <laughs> okay, but we'll see them next week then. I hope so. Okay. As long as they don't come down with it, because Nanny's not going to see them for 10 days. And yeah. I really, really miss them. Yeah. And she's been practicing her song. Okay. <laughs> if we ever get her to sing it. We will it. get it. We'll get it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Larry, you got a mic. Uh, yeah, I want to have uh, prayers for Kathy Schneider. She. Uh, told me today that she's got some serious health problems with uh, spinal problems and that, and we just need her prayers. Uh, keep her in our prayers, and, and Kath, we all love you, and you know we're yeah. thinking about you. Yes, and today is a day that we do, it's the last Sunday of the month, so we'll be having, setting up the station for healing prayers, and if you can't come up, just wave your hand and they'll come to you. It, glad to see Vicki back and your whole family's recovered now. She had COVID among the family, had to cancel graduation parties, and we uh, Any other concerns? When Chris was talking about the homeless and how we pass them, if they're sitting there, they probably can use some water or a sandwich. Most of them are by the food stores. Give them something to eat. This way you're not giving them money for drugs or alcohol, whatever their issues are. Give them some food and show your kindness in this heat that they're sitting out there. A, bo a couple of bottles of water, whatever you can afford. It doesn't have to be much. Yeah, thank you. There is a gift, though, in just sometimes acknowledging, even as you're passing through, saying good morning. I mean, as I did ministry up in, we were doing inner city ministry, and many of the people that I dealt with said that was the hardest thing about being in that position, is that you became invisible. Yeah. So, anything, any other prayers? Well, then let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us, for the ability to travel, for family, especially when we get to see grandkids and great-grandkids. Nobody ever told me how wonderful it would be to be a grandfather until I was. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the be able to celebrate those birthdays and anniversaries and mark those, those special times in life. Lord, we lift up Barbara, Elaine's sister-in-law. We lift up her family at this time as they're sitting and waiting and it's painful and it's sad, but let them know about the promise that comes with you, the promise that we will all be together. And as I was sharing with Elaine, Lord, you know, sometimes that promise seems really thin and shallow, especially when you're in the midst of pain, but the promise endures. And sometimes it's that, that promise that helps us to come out of that grief, Lord. And we thank you for that promise. And we, we bank on that promise, Lord. 
Lord, we lift up all those around us who are disadvantaged, those who are without homes, without steady jobs, those who are forced to live on the corners. Help us to see them, Lord, and be there for them as they need. And whether it is just a smile or a bottle of water or a sandwich, Lord, help us to be your messengers of Christ's love into the world. Lord, we pray all this. We pray all this hoping and trusting in your goodness and mercy. We pray all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. At this time, we transition to our offering, our offertories, and to the meal. So, I guess you got a song up there. Oh, no, you got a very important line. Don't forget that one. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. So let us pass the peace around and work our way over to the sanitation station so we can pass the germs off.
Let us pray the offering prayer as one voice. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear the fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we, should, we, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection overcame, grow, opened, uh, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. And now let's be so bold as to pray the words as we've been taught by our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are invited to this table. We serve communion by intinction. You'll be handed a piece of bread, and you can dip it in either the red liquid, which is wine, or the clearer liquid, which is grape juice. Um, either an or or neither. Christ is present in all the elements around us now. Please be seated. <laughs>
life-giving God. Through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now as you check out from God's hotel, go and find a place in your heart that the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit may bless you, comfort me, comfort you, show you the paths of life, and lead you out into the world in Christ's name, this day and always. Amen. Amen.
in peace. Love your neighbor.